everyone. Today we're going to be writing our first program to our Productivity 1000 series uh, PLC. Now the first thing we'll do is call up our software. Here's our icon for our Pro uh, Productivity Suite. So here we go. And last time what we did was we uh, read the project from the CPU and we, we determined that we set up our Ethernet and our USB connection. So let's just, uh, we can choose either one. We'll just double click on it and it gives me the warning that we have no valid project in our CPU. Now, if we look at our CPU, here's our uh, power supply here, our uh, actual CPU unit itself. We have our uh, output module. We have our combination out and in, and we have our uh, input uh, test switches. So that is our system that we are looking for. It's telling me right now they're warning. We have nothing in there because this is a brand new CPU itself. So we'll just say OK. Now the first thing we need to do is start a new project. So we could have chose that initial uh, start a new project. Or we can go up here and we'll hit new project. And right now here we'll, we'll select our CPU which is our P1540 which is uh, our productivity. And what we'll do is I go to Hardware Configuration. Now under Hardware Configuration, the only thing we see currently right now is just the CPU itself because that's the only thing we've selected. So what we want to do is we want to read the system configuration because we are online. We can tell that by looking down here on our status. We're connected to the CPU through our Ethernet port. So let's just read the status information. So it's reading that. And what it does is it automatically goes out it it asks the CPU what uh, uh, I.O. cards it has and associated equipment. And it comes back and then it tells us to add this to our system itself. So um, it's saying it's missing a, a power supply. So we're going to say yes, add that. We could say yes to all for all these questions, but we'll just do it one at a time. So now we've added a um, power supply as you see in my picture. Now it's saying we're missing a module. We'll say yes to that one. And then the second module and then the third module. All right. So that is our complete system, which currently matches here our, our actual hardware that we see. The other thing that's important here is we have checked up here default IO tags, which is, it is the default. It will do this for you. So as I'm adding these modules, it's adding information to my, um, uh, my control tags itself. So that's the next thing we'll do. So we'll close down my uh, auto con or hardware configuration. So that's exactly what we have. We know that matches now. And we go down to our tag database. And under tag database, because we had it automatically um, uh, say that uh, our the configuration is automatic and we said that we're going to automatically do the default tags, what we'll do here is look down and we have um, tags that are automatically assigned to uh, CPU events and information, but then it starts here and we have discrete uh, output tags. So this is my discrete output tag that was uh, uh, put on there. And then we have our, and it goes up to uh, 16. So it's a 16 input uh, input or output card. Then what we have is the next is slot number two. So it's uh, two, and then we have the first eight are actual uh, input, and then we have the next eight are outputs because it's a combination card, and then finally we have um, eight of our switches that we are using, and it's uh, third third slot over. So then they automatically get populated within there. So we can close that down. So since we have those both covered, what we'll do now is take a look. So there's my application tools. And you can see all this stuff here that we just went through. So it was system hardware, then our tag database. Right? Now we can write our program and then we can go on and do the monitoring and debugging and online, offline, etc. So let's go to contacts here and what we want to do is put a normally 
the open contact where our cursor is. So we'll double click on it and it automatically puts it up here. And now it's asking for my tag instruction. And we're going to put that as my uh, start. So let's go, uh, it would be D. Just type in D I, right? There's my uh, combination. But we want the third one here. So the first selector switch here is what I'm looking for here. So it's my third location. And I'm going to do that as my start. So we'll say OK. And now what we'll do is uh, we can do a branch. Or we'll do a, uh, yeah, we'll do a branch here. And we'll hit the control and down arrow key. And that will give us a line down. And what we'll do is do another uh, going open contact. And this time here, we will do it off of our first output. And slot one, the first one here, we'll say OK. Then we'll do a, uh, a normally closed. So we'll just do a cert simple start stop circuit uh, for our first program. So again, we'll do a, a normally closed this time. And yeah, I, and it'd be the second switch here. We'll hit OK. And then my output my coils. And what we'll do is put the output coil. And my output coil will be the same as what we see up here, which is D0. And it'll be the third one. Or sorry, the I. So DI. And you'll notice that we have end statements already there. So that is our program that we're going to be doing. So again, it's just going to be a simple start, stop, and that's it. So we'll save our program now. And what we'll do now is it'll ask you for the save name. We'll just cancel that. And what we'll do is we will compile the program, I'll complete it, and then we can uh, transfer the program to the CPU. So there we go. Our program is now transferred. So now what we can do is we can throw this switch into run. And what we should do is when we turn this switch on, we see that the output actually turns on as per our program here. Or if we turn on the next switch, it should stop, which it does. Turn it on. It stays on when I turn it off. And then our stop. So our program is working exactly as we expected. So that is our first program. Now, all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. And if you like this program and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. 
Thanks for watching.